Alright, so in this one, we are going to be reacting to Goresh's ranking the top 10 best characters in early November part 1 tier list. Assumably it's part 1 because Legends Fest will be upon us soon by the end of November, probably, uh, what, the early 20s, late 20s of November. Uh, it should begin, so more than likely everyone will be doing a part 2 November tier list because of that, but... Maj Vegeta has shaken up the meta quite a bit. Uh, he is a very strong character. So with that being said, this is my opinion. This is his opinion. All I know about GPQ from all I've heard and uh, seen on other tier lists is that they love survivability. So survivability is going to be on top tier for them. Everything else is just a little bit worse than that. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's just get into the uh, oh, 10A, 10B, and 9 all together. This will be interesting. Let's see who it is. I haven't seen really anything. Actually, I saw it. Then I forgot the entire thing. My memory is like a goldfish. All right. So we're going to start off with a bit of a weird ranking here. Just to give my opinion before he even says his opinion, because I actually do want to hear what he says here. Uh, Kid Boo, I agree. 10B-ish. You know, Kid Boo was 12 for me. Evil Boo was much higher for me here. And Ultra Gohan was like 13. So understandably for two of these characters, Evil Boo, though, I do want to hear why he's actually so low, because I'm pretty sure Goresh was the one pushing forward how good Evil Boo is, and now he has him at this very, very, very low tier threshold. Anything that's like 8, 9, 10 is usually kind of the case of, well, 9, 10 usually, is usually the case of this is good for this meta, and then it'll move forward and they'll kind of leave and go into like a top 15, top 20 when the meta changes to something else that they're not their perfect self in, which is what Evil Boo is right now, more like his perfect self, Ultra Gohan, for obvious reason, purple's going down, yellow's up, green safety, you know how it is. But let me hear this. Uh, I'm actually going to put an 11th spot on this top 10 list. Uh, and the reason is just because I felt like there's 11 characters that definitely deserve to be on here. Okay. Um, I didn't feel comfortable leaving off any of these three characters for this spot mm -hmm. here. And then we are going to have eight other characters above this. Um, I, I just feel like there's merit for all three of these characters right now. Because I, I, I see all these guys fairly often, at least personally. Uh, kind of shocked. Course, I don't Maja run to Ultra Gohan or Kid Buu much at all. Kid Buu has Evil been a, a lot. For a long time. I think with the release of Majin Vegeta, it gets a bit harder to justify a position for Kid Buu on Majin Buu Saga. Mm -hmm. The reasoning is just He's because not Vegeta just crushes mm -hmm. him. Uh, Majin Vegeta with a lock and ultimate just destroys him. Go tanks. are getting uh, more character. Go tanks. Um, what is it? He goes neutral on main. Is it not what he does on main and on blue card? He goes neutral. Go tanks. It also just rush Kid Buu. So you do a strike card. You click your main ability. You rush. Or you do a strike card and Kid Buu's like half health. You do the ultimate and you kill. But you probably just rush at that point. So yeah. Kid Buu. He's not core MBS. I think core MBS. And maybe he'll disagree. Would be Go tanks, uh, Evil Buu, and MV. So. Kid Buu has opportunity. It's just, like I've said, there's just better that exists. I really don't run into Kid Buu or Ultra Gohan. Honestly, I probably run into Ultra Gohan more than Kid Buu, but most of the time, I don't run to either, like, 90% of the time. It's just, they're pretty rare. That For are me. able to nullify Evil Buu, though. With He's their not. Ability He's active, common. Like, Go Tanks, like Evil Buu, and Majin Vegeta can just intentionally whiff his ultimate and shoot a... Uh... A rising rush after that to stop Kid Buu if they, he doesn't, you know, he yeah, can't you can't drop combo ult then rush straight away because they're locked in. Um, Kid Buu's still a really good character, um, and even defensively, Majin Vegeta with the gauge against Kid Buu because remember, Kid Buu specifically is drawing blast cards with his, with his mm -hmm. green card, which is the main reason so how he gets hurt by that. Yes. Combos out. So I think yeah, just Kid Buu will go on. I'm on board Vegeta with has hurt Kid Buu more than helped him, even though you can kind of run them together. I think what ends up happening more often than not is you're just replacing Kid Buu on uh, Buu Saga with Majin Vegeta. And that's definitely an issue at this point, too, that we're seeing with Buu Saga in terms of just a more general look at the team, too, is there's just too many good characters on Buu Saga, right? We have Gotenks, we have Kid Buu. Yeah, Kid he's not wrong there. Uh, Buu Saga has Fusing SV, Kid Buu, Evil Buu, Ultan, Gotenks, Majin Vegeta. Um, did I say Evil Buu, Kid Buu? I, I didn't say one of them, I'm sure. Um, I, there's more, I'm probably forgetting. That's seven characters right there, though. That's more than a proud team. I know there's more. I just can't even think of them right now. Yeah, no. Uh, Majibu Saga is glazed. It's gotten three different, essentially you could call it, campaigns within this last, what, uh, a little bit over a year span. It, it's been ridiculous. Oh, yeah, Boo Duo. I mean, they got Zenkai. They're pretty competent, in my opinion. We have Majibu Vegeta. We have uh, Fusing Super Vegeta. Like, there's so many good characters for Majin Buu Saga. You can't just simply run all of them at the same time. You have to pick and choose which yeah. ones you want to main. There's a lot of variants. So. 
I, I don't know if Kid Buu really makes the cut for the best of, of Majin Buu Saga anymore, and it's becoming a little bit tougher to justify his position in like the top five on this list. So I feel pretty comfortable with him sort of being in this. Which is funny because most people would have him like six, again, seven. What, what you want to call this? Three MV. You would think you'd go up with MV. Like the 11th character there, on goes the down. Here, but a lot. I feel pretty okay with him being in this uh, area on the list. Evil Boo, I think, is still pretty good. Hanging in there, he's kind of feels similar to Kid Boo in a way, but um, I think Evil Boo probably is able to provide a little bit more than Kid Boo. Yeah. Um, if I was going to order this uh, the way that I have things on here, I think I would actually have Evil Boo at okay. nine, I like Gohan that. at ten, and Kid Boo at eleven. I think. For reference, I had again Kid Boo at I think twelve, Ultra Go on at thirteen, and then um, Evil Boo was seven. When I finished off the list, tie with Omega Shenron 7 8. So him 9 here. Again, those lower tiers, I, I really already mentioned this in my own video. In my tiers, if you didn't see it. Um, anything below the top four in this current meta, I don't care your order of them. Well, the Ultra should be the top two. But like, the top four should be consistent of Triku, Gotenks, Turles, MV. That's it. Th those are the four best characters right now against one another and against the entire game. Anything else besides that really is kind of. Not irrelevant, but less relevant, right? So this here, I'm not on board fully with it. Again, Evil Blue would have much higher. He has a lot of uh, goodness for Majin Buu Saga and is on core of it alongside MV having good safety at the pseudo lock. And you know what uh, Evil Blue does, right? It's not really rocket science. He's just very annoying and uh, very good at being annoying. Kid Buu, Ultra Gohan, I mean, what are they, 10 11 here okay i have them 12 13 so it's not a big deal i just want to hear a little more on evil boo um evil boo for me i think just seems to be a very consistent staple for boo saga still uh, -huh. uh of course like i mentioned earlier he Agreed. has the endurance nullification on main yep. ability effect so coming up with Majin really saga against majin vegeta because majin vegeta can get killed through a rising a rising rush like exactly if you're, blast if main, pop main ability, you can rush majin vegeta and kill him because majin vegeta doesn't thing. remove buffs uh when the enemy uses rising rushes it's only blue cards and ultimates right so majin vegeta actually could die to evil boo technically yes. um i think majin boo works very well with evil boo as well the color synergy there with green and yellow is pretty good Oh, and, Majin um, Buu. I mean, mean, there's definitely cases Majin where Majin Vegeta can, like, kill Evil Buu, too, with the lock in. I mean, that's yeah. that's not really something I'm going to hold against Buu. Because he could do that to, like, everybody. Yeah, you know, something that happens, like, almost every character in the game. <laughs> exactly. My Majin Vegeta just killed. Um, but I think Evil Buu is still pretty solid. Has, like, the few counts uh, lock in on, on entry. He has the support. He has the disrupt. He has the bulk. Drive most um, So a lot of what Evil Buu is doing, I think, is still is still valuable, but... Um, it's a little bit tougher to run him with Majin Vegeta floating around, but again, I think he pairs well with him. So I wonder how I it's know. harder to run him. I would say it's actually a lot easier. Again, Majin Vegeta allows you a system. Um, Evil Blue, by the way, if you aren't facing a purple, you just let him end the combo tanking it. Like, he takes the last two cards of the combo. You kind of tell when a combo is about to end, right? And maybe Ultan will draw a card because he swapped, and then he does one more card after that. Evil Blue gets defense neutral at that point, and uh, he could actually end up tanking purples for because... He's defense neutral, but more to the point, Evil Boo, because Mob Vegeta, would gain value to me, at least that's why he has gained value on my list, um, because you have safety. These purples have clearly gone down, right? I'm sure UG4 is going to pop up soon enough, and Ultan, but uh, Evil Boo would go up to me. I feel like he's kind of stagnated here. Nine, yes, not too far off from seven, but I do think there is a little bit of a difference because UG4... I would say is below Evil Boo. I wasn't on board with that, but now I am. After using UG4, it was very tough, very brutal, very not good. Yeah, no, Evil Boo, I think, has to be above UG4 for me. Uh, having him below, I think it's kind of not downplaying Maj Vegeta, but more not fully taking on the synergy that they have, Maj and Vegeta and Evil Boo. Because reminder, they both have that entry lock-in thing, which is very tedious. One's destroying Dragon Balls, one's sealing Rush. Like, they have law cohesion they're clearly meant to be run together and well they work well together uh old go on i do not care to hear an explanation because i don't disagree this placement for him it's very close to what i have the lower tiers do not matter as much as the higher so let's get to number eight here coming in at number eight speak of the devil uh ug4 fun fact after i did my video on him uh initially on a tier list i had him six was it six uh yeah i think i had him six not mistaken after doing a video on him and using him 
Oh man, it was not a good time. It was very bad. He was dying left and right. He wasn't even getting his ultimate off sometimes. It was bad news bears. Surely I played badly sometimes. But sometimes it was just a UG4 thing. Can't really exist right now. Especially facing that yellow, yellow, blue, which is the best team in the game. So all in all, I would actually understand after using him that if you were to have him 8, 9, I wouldn't be against it. I would say 8. I would put him lowest. I would still put him above Ultan, who would be 9 for me, which I still stand by that. Ultan should not be very high, in my opinion. And I'm sure he's going to be higher than I have him because this is 8. Ultan's not here. So I'll hear Gresh out. But UG4, I can understand this placement. Uh, again, I think Evil should actually be above him. So that's where I'm at. But let me hear a little bit of this. Not too much because I don't disagree with this. Is Ultra Super Saiyan for Gogeta? Um, so obviously, I think people are probably going to know why he is a bit lower on no. this list than he was in the Couldn't prior help. list. Uh, I actually thought once we got Tree of Might Goku, he was going to be like the answer to Gogeta. And yeah. I think he actually was a very well designed character for specifically countering this guy. It's more like he was meant to be an option, kind of like. I want to say Namek Goku, because Namek Goku was intended to kind of ruin UVB's life. Uh, trying to think of a different one. I guess Goku Frieza. Goku Frieza was very good against UVB, but wasn't like, oh yeah, you're always going to get this one shot 24-7 because you always have this ideal situation. I feel like that's what Shriku is to UG4, and then MV is Janemba to UVB, right? That's what it's meant to be. It's kind of be like this duo meant to counter this one Ultra instead of this solo where it was with, like, US being cooler, it was a solo unit, right? You didn't get an Ultra to do it because Cooler did it so well. Um, here, this year, and last, it feels like there's meant to be, like, two units that could. One can individually do it amazingly, but if you were to run them, let's say, together, this year at least, with Trico and MV, this guy, yes, his value is in the fucking dirt right now. It wasn't to the level where it completely rendered this guy worthless, but it also wasn't almost, like, a nothing burger, mm -hmm. right? Tree Mike Goku release, and I think he did a good job of shutting this just guy down help. without and making he got help, him almost terrorist. irrelevant. And so I thought they had this guy in like a great spot as the headlining ultra, you know, big hype character. Well, I guess one of the big hype characters. The sixth anniversary's lineup was insane. One of the big like hype characters of the sixth anniversary. Uh, you know, time. I would say post Tree of Mike Goku and post Turles, he was probably trending in like the th you know three to five, which is insane by the way. Uh, rankings three to five is insane fair. work. You know, for a character that was getting fucked over. That's a good spot for the character, considering he only came out four months ago or something like that, close to four months ago. Um, so I thought, you know, he was in a good spot with Tree of Might Goku releasing, and now we have Majin Vegeta, yeah. who uh, is a much bigger counter to this guy than I thought they would release, because they already had one counter to him. Mm -hmm. um, now, there is one issue I actually found with using Majin Vegeta against this character, and it's kind of funny because it's... In, in a way, you could say he's too good of a counter. Uh, so typically, the oh, way that you use proc, Majin Vegeta it, against this guy is you'll switch into Majin. Like you start a combo on this Gogeta, you switch into Majin Vegeta, you land a, you land one strike striker card, blast, main. and then you main ability grab the ult, lock him in, and yes. kill him. Now, what actually happens? You pop the gauge. <laughs> what actually happens is you switch into Majin Vegeta. He inflicts two sub counts to the whole enemy team, so we can't switch. You need to free up a slot in your hand so you can actually main ability and draw the ultimate. But when you hit him with a, when you hit this character with Majin Vegeta with a Striker or a Blast card, it usually does so much damage that it brings him below half HP, yep. and you can't then chain in the ultimate to lock him in and kill him because his gauge is. And now he's defense neutral. And and... neutral. So that is kind of like. A... <laughs> it is funny because I've actually said this in the past, and it was just kind of stupid. But now it kind of makes it feels more real than it was ever since that. A worse off built UG4 in some sequences actually is a better UG4. This is a prime example of it. My shitty uh, UG4, if I build them shitty with like C equips and just non optimal shit, that takes 50% from a Mob Vegeta one strike that gets his gauge and gets defense neutral that can't get sniped now, would sometimes be a better situation than my perfect equipped UG4 taking 35% from a strike and then getting ulted because my gauge isn't procced, my defense neutral isn't procced. It is hilarious. This is one of the only characters in the game that's like this. You having a worse off character of stars or equipment or bench actually could benefit this character. Now, it's not going to save his life every time, but it could actually end up saving his life sometimes, which is just comical. I really do think that's comical because I've seen it. I've done it where it's like I do one strike with MV 
It's like an eight star UG4. And I'm like, okay, well, let's get a proc this 50% thing. He's going to take like 70% from this strike. Then I have to land a whole different combo. Like, yes, I'll do it. But like, I have to do a whole different combo. <laughs> it's just hilarious that this character, this fucking broken god, had to get something that was so cheesy. Like, even if you're badly built, you're still going to be a tedious little rat. And that's what UG4 summarizes as. He obviously goes down, but it is funny that there are sequences where he just lives by being worse off on a whole building aspect of him, which that's just, it's just so stupid, but it's so real. Let's go to number seven, though. Oh, it's number spoiled seven, it for we are going to Omega have... Shenron. Uh, equal. I had Omega Shenron literally tied seven eights there, so, yep, not too far off. Uh, literally on the same level of it. One spot differential really doesn't mean much until you get into, like, the top two. I, I've said multiple times that, uh, if you have them just, you know, um, one to two away, kind of below this top five threshold, sure, why not? You know, the 9-10 area, 9-10 is so weird because 9-10 really means, like, you could be number 15, and if this person is valuing more because of this sequence they had in PvP or that sequence, then you go all the way up to 10. It really is that close between, like, the, the 9 through 15 characters in this game for, like, the last couple months, actually. So those tiers are kind of more lenience this is kind of lenient area as well seven eight same goddamn thing i literally haven't swabble evil boo evil boo should be a bit higher but nonetheless let's go to number six because i agreed with this no all righty number six is going to number six is vegeto who'd i have number six i had ug4 six and now i'd lower him to eight so vegeto wow where's ultan ultan has to be five five four no he can't no the top four has to be the four i mentioned there's no shot he's higher than that Vegito number six. I have Vegito number five. I actually just want to hear what he has to say about Vegito though. Just be in general. Super does Vegito. he gain? Does he lose? I think there's a pretty distinct cutoff uh, after this character. It's like in between Omega and this character. I feel like there's a pretty big gap right now. Um, I don't think there's a big gap between like this character and Omega as individual oh, okay. characters. But in terms of the meta right now, I think there's a pretty big gap between I, at least how often uh, how often I see these characters like used in PvP and just their <sighs> overall power Man. that I feel. Exists of anybody on this list, I fight Evil Boo the so most so far that I've seen. Six, I think Nobody else I fight more than Evil Boo on this list, particularly up to now. Majin Vegeta. Neither Same. of those characters have buff removal on Rising Rush, yep. which means so, that uh, this character can... As I mentioned, really if you do the rush, rush and you have a rush that's free, one character guess what? Your value's so higher. Um, you, Evil Boo, Gotenks, Evil should be higher, but it's still. So this character is kind of... You kind of always have to be aware of them, right? Um, and I think against specifically the Majin Buu Saga team, uh, you that this is almost kind of why I feel you really have to be running Evil Boo. It's because of this character. That's why right? is he so I low? Mean, you have so many good characters on Majin Buu Saga, like I mentioned earlier in this video. You have this character, you have Gotenks, you have Majin Vegeta, you have Ultimate Gohan, you have Evil Boo, you have Kid Boo. It's like, who do you run on Majin Buu Saga? I do feel like because of the existence of this character and because of how often I still run into this character, I wish I ran into it's uh, Evil Boo that I think you really need to run. It's kind of crazy I to agree. say like, Evil Boo just really feels like a staple on, on I Buu agree. Saga. So why is he at... Again, Evil Boo, it's hard, it's hard to really say because Evil Boo can still get crushed by Majin Yeah, Buu. but everybody can. Evil Boo can get crushed by characters like Gotenks, Tree of Might Goku can do a lot of damage and combo. Even, like, Tree of Might Goku doesn't even particularly really care about Evil Boo's like, ridiculous disrupt. Well, like, the only character on this list doesn't really care about that. Besides Gotenks, too, but <sighs> this character, yeah, but they're not... uh, I think, um, definitely isn't a but very they're so much higher right now. I don't, I don't really know if there's anything else that needs to be said here. I guess the one downside is Majin Vegeta gets a very easy kill on them. He can't. They can't <laughs> steal right? blues, but like Vegeta on tag touches out. this character once. They're dead. And they're like, is there? What is the difference between this character and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta in terms of them getting countered by Majin Vegeta? Is there really a difference there? I don't think you can say that for. I think every singular unit. I'm trying to think who wouldn't die to Majin Vegeta in three cards. Because I'm thinking, like, type neutral green card, strike ultimate. Who wouldn't die? Ultan, technically. Technically, right? I mean, he would still take a fuck ton. You wouldn't even do the ultimate. You would literally just do green card, strike, strike, and then they're going to swap out. Then you do the ultimate on that character they swap out into because they're literally losing their first life. And if you do two strikes with old to Majin... Wait, if you do two strikes from Majin Vegeta to Ultan... You're most likely killing his first life regardless. And then you just do the ultimate you're going to kill. Despite the neutral, you're still going to kill him most likely. Um, and what else? That's it. So it's like, yeah, he could say like, oh yeah, this is just like UG4. They die so quick. He just plop, plop, dead. Well, 
that's like 99% of the game right now, right? Maj Vegeta is like the only one, and Turles are the only two not killing Maj Vegeta on Maj Vegeta's ultimate kind of situation there. That's the only two units that don't die to it. And those are the top two most likely in this list. So yeah, it's just like, they can get killed, but everybody gets killed by Maj Vegeta. There's very few units that would live him because he's that powerful. Number five, though, let's get to it. I'm just going to assume it's Ultan because Ultan has not been spotted and he cannot be top four. Number five is going to be Purple Ultan. So I disagree with this the most on this list. Ultan, I stand by where I said uh, number nine. I do not think he does anything. Every time I face him using Majin Jita, I think he's a joke. I think he's worthless. And the thing is why I'm mentioning only Majin Jita is because UG4 here is so low because you're thinking about Majin Jita against him, right? But Ultan, I'm thinking about Majin Jita against him. And I see Ultan doing virtually zero anytime I faced him while running Majin Vegeta in my own play. But I need to hear this out because I want to be convinced otherwise, if possible. Gohan. Uh, I think Five before we crazy, start talking man. about details with this guy, I think uh, you probably could swap this guy with number four on the list. Uh, I was considering mm. having this be a shared spot, number five and number four together, but I, I, I do four? think I, it's I, one I of the four I named the character we're going to talk about at number four after this, but. Ultimate Gohan number five. I don't really need to go into excruciating detail about this character. Everyone knows this I'd guy like works. Um, I think one of the biggest things I might see from people, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people had this guy a little lower on the list just because of Majin Vegeta's impact. Uh, the one thing I'll say about that is I, I don't really know if Majin Vegeta has like some extermination level like counter to this. Come Gohan. on. This Gohan, remember, he's, he's confident by himself. I mean, you, you, you talk about like Majin Vegeta's gauge being an issue for this mm -hmm. character. Remember, when this Not guy age, gets blue yeah. carded, when he's on the battlefield, uh -huh. he I, let me see if I can remember everything correctly. He's healing. I think he's healing 30 nice. percent health. He's going type neutral. He's lowering enemy special move power by 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot going on with this character when he's getting blue. He still takes like 50 percent. And <laughs> From, I, I think I'm there's no really blue, I'm pretty sure. huge worries about that with this guy. Um, even against the lock-in, I mean, he's got the uh, buff removal, he's got the heal, he's got the power down, he's obviously got the endurance. Uh, so, you know, I don't think there's some major, like, you know, red going. alarm going off, red alert, you know, alarm bells ringing that this guy's going to get just trounced by Majin Vegeta. Obviously, yellow beats purple, but for a purple character, I think this guy is much more competent at dealing with a powerful yellow like Majin Vegeta than Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is. Um, this guy works. So the reasonings is the blue card won't do too much. He talked about the ultimate. Um, why not? This might sound crazy. Why not talk about normal cards? And maybe he will. But he didn't even mention normal cards against Ultimate Gohan. Why would I, as a person using Masjida, not just do normal? I, I know what Ultan does. So I'll just do strike, blast, strike, blast, strike, blast. I mean. I mean, is Ultan, is Ultan a tank? Ultan's not a tank, fun fact. But is Ultan a tank? I do those cards. I pop his first life. I do the ultimate. I'm going to kill him. The ultimate's going to kill him. I know it's going to kill him. I don't know. He'll take one more card than UG4 to kill. Does that make him this high up? That, that's all I see in him. He takes one more card than UG4 to end up dying from Majin Jita. Is that enough to make him from... What is he? Eight UG4 for this guy to be five? I don't see it. Very well with Go Tanks. This guy works very well um, on the Boo Saga team. I think it's very tough to 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 think of a you know like top of the line competitive Boo Saga team without including this guy. I think this guy plus you know it's tough. I, I still don't know, and I haven't decided on what I think the best build of Boo Saga is. It's not him. I am actually leaning towards wards come on not running evil boo <sighs> just because you have to sack off running go tanks or this guy you don't need old time you're running Majin what do you need old time um so i but i don't know but i think this guy you don't need old time to deal with the greens that he's naming on this list like that's what old time's like he's purple he beat greens what green is so ferocious evil boo is not that fucking jesus christ to need him omega shirt on he literally says there's a gap between from that tier to where we are going to now Ultra Gohan is even lower than Omega Shenron and Evil Boo. You don't need Ultan. You got two top three, top four yellows. You know what I mean? 
Like, what do you, what do you need Ultan for? I, I, I just don't, I don't know what you need him. There's no necessity. If you're top five, I think you're needed in the meta. I don't think you need this guy. Not at all. And he said he's debatable number four, which number four, I think it's a big gap between four or five in meta, like, peak prowess. I do not think Ultan is anywhere near that. Definitely well right with now. Gotenks. And um, I, I think that partnership is one of the best in the game. That that this guy plus Gotenks is probably just as good as Turles plus Streamite Goku. Honestly, they're they're about <sighs> neck and neck, I would say. But uh, yeah, this guy is very good. Um, I don't think he has as many issues against Majin Majita as you would expect because they again, I don't know if they were designing him with that in mind. But we can even just show this on the screen here. I think it's is it in his first unique ability? No, it's in a second one. Right here. The falling effects occur when an enemy activates a special move, Ultimate Arts, Awakened Arts, or Rising Rush. Restores health by uh, 30%, goes type neutral for 10 counts, shortens ally sub count by 3, minus 50% to special move, Ultimate, and Awakened Arts power for 3 counts, and cancels enemies' buff effects. So, talk about a character that actually has the tools to deal with a super powerful yellow with, like, lock-in blue cards. This guy is it. So, I feel pretty good without this guy being number 5. So, let's just say... Two hypotheticals, two different. I assume he thinks Yellow Yellow Blue is the best team in the game, which most people should, because, well, it kind of acts like it, and it feels like it is. Especially if, uh, well, these units up here are going to be as high as they are, two of them being part of that Yellow Yellow Blue. Two of them are in top four. One of them is in the top four, the blue. Um, Triku, Blast Cards, Health Store Debuff, Majin Vegeta. Like, this is so easy for me. To just dismantle on this, in my opinion. Triku, double blast cards, spam them out. Go to Maz Vegeta, do a strike card. You're pseudo locked in. Ultan can't heal anything. Do a strike into a strike. The bare minimum, the endurance is gone. He might even be dead at that point. Like, th did I miss did I miss something there? He's pseudo locked. He can't swap out a Maz Vegeta at that point. You do two spam blast cards, it it's gonna land. It's gonna it's gonna hit. You're not gonna have the perfect sub counts to swap on two spam blast cards in every sequence of your life. That, that, that's not realistic. And doing two spam blast cards is not unrealistic, right? It's pretty easy. Maz Jita, strike, strike. You're pseudo locked. You can't swap. Sub counts are up. No one's lowering the sub counts at all. Nobody. Old Tom, he'll have his gauge ready or he'll get his gauge right after. Then I do another Maz Jita entry, then boom, he's dead. Ultimate or not, he's dead. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Ultan does. I don't know. Uh, he, he's talking about the ultimates and the special moves. That's great. He didn't once mention normal cards. He didn't even mention Shriku with Majorjita when that's like one of the best teams in the game. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yes, the arguments he made are valid, but there's other arguments that exist that are more normal in a match to happen that aren't even brought up. So it's just... It's a bit confusing, honestly. What is, like, I, I can't think of it. Yeah, no. Triku, Blast, Blast. Oz, Jita. Enters. Do a strike. Do a strike. What, what, what am I missing? Literally, what am I missing? You can't swap. You try to swap by that third card coming in, but then the sub counts are up and you can't swap. Boom. Health store is down. You're really going to heal on your endurance. You're going to have like 300k. I don't know. And Ultan's not necessary against the green units in the current meta. <laughs> if he were necessary, then UG4 would be higher. Ultan's not necessary versus them. But I digress. I do not understand the Ultan placement. He only talked about big moves. Talk about the normal cards because normal cards are going to be more active than the big moves. That's just kind of how the game works, right? Let's go number four. Let's move on to number four next. Number four is going to tree. be LF Tree of my sure, Goku. Sure, Let's sure, sure. Tree. Um, so I have it where Tree was number three. Go Tanks was number four, so I assume. Actually, I see here that two and three are combined, which is interesting. Uh, very interesting, actually, because I have uh, the ultras being a gap between the others. But nonetheless, tree number four. I would say tree. It, it's just that yellow, yellow, blue, man. And maybe he'll mention it, but uh, I think tree has to be number three. Like I get it, Go Tanks is good against tree, and he's good against. Uh, MV, I get it. I'm I'm on board. I'm coherent. I understand. But you also have to notice 
that tree is defense neutral on his entries. You have MV who can get defense neutral pretty uh, consistently. And while Turles is a blue that doesn't give a fuck whether Gotenks is neutral or not, he doesn't give a fuck about Gotenks. So it's like, yes, there is two yellows on the arguable best team in the game, but they're not always just yellow. I feel like that's the thing that is uh, pretty important to point out. A very, very good character. Um, I think what's the best way to word this like this guy was released as the first layer of a counter to super saiyan 4 yep. vegeta and i i don't know like majin vegeta's he's a namek slot hurting I, gogeta so much i think also I think indirectly hurts this character a little bit because you're not is presented he? with as many super saiyan 4 gogeta's as we were no go tanks is never two mind. weeks ago right um, this guy is obviously still very competent, even without facing Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Yes. I think one of the best things about this character is his ability to not care as much about Disrupt. Um, he has the ridiculously strong. Oh, he's also good cards. against Gogeta's gauge because his gauge because the lock in field. or not even his gauge. The lock in is pretty competent so when it he comes makes all to their key reduce sniped by Majin Vegeta as well. Remember when Majin Vegeta goes for the snipe on this character? Go. This guy's going to remove his buff effects and he's going to heal by thirty percent, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Typically, when you're building teams for this character and you're building equipment options for this guy, uh, a lot of times you'll be using equipment that increase health restoration too. So it's not just 30%, it's 30% plus whatever the bonus to health restoration True. you have. Then he gets his gauge, then more, then um, more, then more, then more, then more. To really come in and just snipe this guy unless he's a good like third character on a lot of teams. Uh, one thing I think that could be an issue with this character is typically the way that I've used him is I would intentionally get him below half HP. Because I like to have him be at the level where like he's going to fill up his gauge, heal, and then be able to continue comboing and filling up his own gauge as well. It's just going to cycle through um, all those different effects. The the, the, the the support, the healing, the okay. sub-count reduction. Um, but now when you're fighting against somebody that's using Majin, yeah, it's, a Vegeta, risky it's game super to get risky low. to have this guy yeah, just floating around at low levels of HP because then he can just get sniped. So... That I think hurts him a little bit. I am. Um, I don't I think, think most people um, do that. To be fair, one thing that's that really strong about unique. this character, in terms of specifically matching up against Maj Majin Vegeta, is remember this guy has an anti-lock-in mechanic, which is really the first time we've seen something like that. Very strong. Uh, this is, I think, more so supposed against to be. UG4. Or it was intended to be against Super Saiyan Four Gogeta's gauge activating and his AOE green card. But uh, when this guy activates Majin Vegeta's lock-in off of his gauge being activated, Majin Vegeta loses a hundred key. Yep. So he can't actually follow up. It's very the tedious, in, this character you know, to face. Uh, I'm glad people don't run him that much, the, but he, the, the he's tedious. Same with Gold Tanks. Um, off of that. So that is a point uh, of positivity for this Goku in terms of that matchup as well. So I think this guy is continuing to be pretty good. Um, very numerous ways to get Vanish restored as well. Uh, the ultimate, he can get multiple times. He would defeat Ally. Blue card, and of same. course, he's going to pair Vanishes. up very well with Ultra Turles, who's still very, very yes. powerful. So. I think this guy is looking pretty good. I mean, I don't disagree with anything he said. We can also talk about the fact that I think one of the better setups for Majin Vegeta, and I think a lot of people have started to catch on to this, is you simply just throw Majin Vegeta on leader slot next to this character plus Turles, and that is a very Thank hard you. team to take down. I was waiting for this to be mentioned. Uh, Gotenks could be the one sort of thorn in your side if you're running that version of the Yes, of the Gotenks movies, could be annoying. I think that team overall is very, 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 very good. True. So Correct. Dream Mike Goku is going to come into number four. Let's move on to number three. Okay, so I'm going to have a share. Now, spot this here. is interesting. Again, I would have Triku above. Go Tanks, while well, he is tedious, I don't think that Yellow Yellow Blue cares enough about Go Tanks to make him so high. And I don't think Majin Buu Saga is as good as Yellow Yellow Blue, because that's where Go Tanks would run, right? Majin Buu Saga. Alongside MV, and I guess he says Old Tan. If you're going to say Old Tan when Yellow Yellow Blue's running around, good luck. Have fun with that. I would say Evil Blue, personally. 3 slash 2, again, I would swap Triku and Gotenks, that's a whole thing there, but I think there's a gap between, and spoiler, Mob Street is number one here, you can tell, uh, I think there's a gap between the Ultras to the LFs right now. Uh, I think what Turles and Mob do together and individually, um, because they have such good partners, whether it be uh, Turles with Triku or Turles with MV, they have such uh, gaps that they have in their kits all fulfilled by that other partner. Maj Vegeta, much more offense fulfillment of his gaps. Shriku, uh, they kind of just yin-yang to one another. They kind of synergize just very harmoniously, uh, Turles and Shriku. So I would say because of that, and that's why I had Shriku higher, because the harmony between all those three characters, whether it be one another or just all together, is so high. 
Uh, I think there's a gap between one, two because of those harmonies that could exist. So not seeing that does uh, interest me here. Them actually being interchangeable, because that's what this would mean, right? They're three, two. That means one could be three, one could be two. Uh, and you could swap them around is not something I'd expect. But let me hear out Gotenks, because I think this is very high praise for a character that deserves praise. Just not this high. It's one placement different, but the top tiers, it does matter one placement different. At number two and number three, this is going to be shared between LF Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and Ultra Turles. I guess we'll start with Gotenks first, because I actually have not spoken about Gotenks at all, because I didn't do a top 10 since his Which is release. interesting, because Gotenks he was easily top 10. very, very good character. And from what I've seen, again, I'm, I'm not super entrenched in the community of this game on social media. I'm not, like, on social media all day talking with other people about how they feel about certain characters. It's a good but thing. From the little bit that I've seen... From what people are talking about with Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, I do think he is probably one of the more underrated characters in the game right now. I think really people don't people don't understand how strong this is. I'm gonna pull this up because what's it's underrated just, about him? It's very very important right Let now. Let me see. Uh, where is it? 100 counts. 100 counts. No. What is it? These two effects right right here. Uh, no, actually, no, it's this one. What? Nullifies attribute downgrades on normal conditions yeah. for the first 100 time. That's very strong. That Don't means disagree. you are immune to debuffing all down. that annoying shit. You are immune to arts cost increased mm -hmm. debuffs, uh, all those sorts of annoying effects that hamper your ability to continue comboing and make you take more damage from Turles mm -hmm. or, and stuff like that. This guy does not care about any of those things for a hundred counts. Yeah. He's got permanent double card draw speed. He's got the ridiculous green card generation, which works, of course, very well with very like Ultimate Gohan and even Ultra Gohan. Um, and even all the Majin, like even against with even uh, with Majin Vegeta, right? Majin Vegeta's AOE green card, you could just use Gotenks to generate green cards for Majin Same Vegeta. Same yeah. AOE green card everyone down. Um, this guy is pretty good defensively. I don't think he's he's exceptional. <sighs> he has seventy percent roost damage received plus the ten percent, uh, you know, against certain damage types. Which he takes hits like a standard LF wood. Now, but more than he's not a pushover obviously. when it comes to defense if you build him correctly. And uh, combo potential, he's supporting as well. Don't forget yep, that. He's 10. supporting in the form of sustained damage cut penetration. Which if you pop. actually look at Ultra Maja and Vegeta's kit, that is one of the things that he actually doesn't have mm -hmm. access to by himself. That is sustained true. Sustained damage cut penetration. Doesn't need it. Baseline. So but that's that bad aging, That is something aging, right? you can gain from being right next to Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. When uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks Endurance is activated, he gives a 30? full, I believe it's 20 or 30% 30. damage inflicted to the whole team. But it is still, Pretty again, sure. more support. And uh, overall, I just think this character is doing pretty much everything. The only thing he doesn't have, which I think might have been a little bit too good if they gave him it, was Blast Armor on Strikes. Ah, um, it probably would have been too good. Ah, but come on. I, think it would... yeah, I mean, let, let's be real. A lot of range units this year, specifically this year. I mean, look at fucking Triku right there, right behind him on this list. Um, he doesn't have bl he has Blast Armor Strike and he's a range unit. Like He should have had that. I get it. He's very powerful. He's very good right now. Uh, spoiler, it is a shock to say... There's a yellow right next to him. There's a yellow ahead of him. So guess what? The red that's very good against both those yellows has immense value right now. Prior to this, his value was obviously lower than it is current. Uh, he should have Blast Armor, though. The Cup Pen, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, the support on Endurance, that, that's, that exists, don't get me wrong. But who's to say, and this is very easy to do, uh, as you mentioned with Vegito, Evil Boo, whoever else that can do it. Just rush. Just, just rush go tanks. Evil Blue Enter, Blast Card, Strike Card, whatever, Pop Main, rush him. Just just rush him out. He'll, he'll die. The Endurance, I mean, he popped the Endurance, but, like, he's still dead. Like, he's just full dead. So, like, that exists, but, like, yes, but no kind of thing going on there. Um, doing everything? I don't know about all that. That's kind of glaze. Again, he does not defend very well. He's gonna live. Sure, he'll live attacks, but he's not some, like... Garlic Jr. or some Turles. He's a typical LF. Right? Triku has much more sustainability than I would say Gotenks, and Gotenks has endurance, so it's pretty bad if the non endurance character has better sustain than the endurance character. But he does a lot of stuff very well. He's very good against current meta top tiers, so I understand it, and he's even good against the meta not top tiers because he can rush them out if he is uh, not even disadvantaged, just having to do that in that sequence been a little overkill if they went that far with this character because of just what he's doing already the um main ability giving him type neutrality the blue card giving him type neutrality the his blue card should have been chance to faint different i mean i can go down his green card should add neutral things this guy is doing, but he is 
very, very good in all aspects. This is like the definition of an all around great character. So I would say Triku The fits ability that for him lot. to fit on Hybrid Sands, no. Boo Saga, it's actually terrible. Even Fusion Wars, I would say he. Fusion Wars, it's hard to really nah, judge now. Fusion is weird. Vigi, you wouldn't even use UG4, the, the, probably. You know, Super Saiyan 4, Goji to Powerhouse. Omega SV Gotenks. As like your main core, you know, on the team is now a little bit worse off. So I'm gonna not talk about Fusion Warriors as much with this character, but Busaga mm -hmm. hybrids. Nah, I think hybrids. he works very well. Well, he's already Ultra Gohan High or and, Ultimate Gohan. Um, I don't think for people who are not talking super highly about this character, I just don't think either they they've used him that often or they've ran into him that often because he's very annoying. You're fighting somebody who knows what they're doing with this character. So uh, I think this guy is really well. He's designed. good. He's not like super. He does very well. M4, he has M3. It's like the only thing, but. I think he's really, really good. Maybe uh, he's had better experience uh, with him. I don't really need them. to spend too much time on this guy. He is like the only, uh, besides like Garlic Jr., I guess. He's like the only impenetrable character that exists in the game I right now. I wouldn't even say that's true, because Mob Vegeta kind of can't tear through Turles to an extent, because he has extra chance of Saiyans, and then featured boost, and then everything fuck else. But uh, two Turles, one, you know, spoiler alert, Mob Vegeta, all right? Number one. Okay. Very shocking, Mob Vegeta. Yeah, so I would say... Um, the confusing part of this list to me does strike me as Ultan, the, the tree coup and Gotenks thing. I mean, one placement's not that big of a deal, but when you're up the top tier placements of like the top four, and I mention the top four is what really, really matters right now. And then I see a character that I would say was lower, be higher. It's just probably an experience thing at that point, but having Ultan such a high differential, again, what he explained does not really match up to my experience if you, if i'm facing an old ton again i'm just gonna do spam cards and then pop that endurance fast as hell go majajita maybe secure that poppage of it and then boom the next combo he's washed he's dead and this is me running non-yellow yellow blue running yellow yellow blue old ton clearly does worse against yellow yellow blue yes he also doesn't do that great against non-yellow yellow blue because majajita still is a threat you don't need him for Triku. just just have majajita land cards on old ton Things are going to go south for Ultan very fast. So that's kind of the off-put one for me. Evil Blue I'd have higher, but overall, usually with these lists of Goresh, um, I more agree than disagree. So I would say, you know, right now I'm like agreeance of like 70% 7, 70 of this list I agree with. But like there's a cool 30, 25% that's kind of floating around that's like, ah, that could change, ah, that could change. Probably would say the same thing about my list if you were to see my own. But in the general sense... All I cared about was the top four. Top four is all that matters. The order of them, I would just like the Ultras to be the top two. The Ultras are the top two, so great. Would like to see Gotenks be below Triku, but yeah, it is what it is. That's, again, probably just a, uh, maybe as a higher, he has a 14-star Gotenks. I don't. Maybe it's an experience thing. I have a 14-star Triku. He does too, so maybe he's had better experiences with Gotenks than Triku in his own plays, which is what all this is based off and trying to be objective as possible, but you're going to be subjective in a game where there's not full objectivity because every match is different per player. But overall, yeah, no, I like the list. I don't think it's anything crazy. Again, Ulton does confuse me. That really is the one that I'm just kind of stuck on here. UG4, I get it. I, I can understand UG4. I use them. I get this. Ulton, though, I've used Ulton, and I used Ulton Shin Ultra MV, very good team against MV, right? Because you have Shin right there. MV himself is just good against everybody. And then Ulton, I just want to see what he could do on the team. And he was doing basically nothing. He was just kind of playing this random third role. If I had Evil Boo, Gotenks, somebody else, they, they would have done better. Like, if I had anybody else, I had Fusing SV, would have done better. I had anybody else there, would have done better than what Ulton did in that, you know, sequence of usage. So, I wish he would be lower here. Uh, I don't see any value in him right now, truly. I see less value in him than UG4. I think UG4 is still the best purple to uh, deal with all these shenanigans that are going on. He's still not the perfect purple, but he is the best purple to deal with all this bullshit going on that is basically antithesis to him. What would I think of my reaction to Goresh's top 10 tier list? Probably have new content coming out tonight. Probably a Zenkai LF like we had last year this time. Hopefully it is a OG LF cell. In my opinion, that'd be very cool because he already has a plat. Could be Puddle, could be OG LSL, could be sort of Hope uh, Trunks getting his own plat. Who knows? Let me know what I think. I'll see you guys in the next one.